Palava. Today, we need this broken tire pump, the leads from a multimeter, and various tools. Why? Because we're making a wire that makes it easier to diagnose faults on cars. Hopefully. Welcome to Cast by TV. Right, let's use this Nissan Micra to explain why this wire will be useful. Let's say, for example, that the horn isn't working. This could be caused by a problem with the fuse, the relay, something in the steering wheel, the wiring, or even the horn itself. So, if we have a wire that plugs directly into the car's 12 volt power socket and is therefore live, we can run it all the way to the front of the car and then apply power directly onto the horn. And if the horn makes a noise, we know that's okay. And the problem must be caused by something else. So, Let's get to work and make this wire. And step one is to grab the broken tire pump and retrieve the power cable. Here's one end of the cable. So if we follow that along all the way down here, we see it goes into the machine where then under this electric motor and it emerges here by that printed circuit board. So this is where we'll cut it. And there are two wires, of course. So let's come in here with these scissors. And we'll save as much length as we can. One cut and two. Good. Let's now grab the wire cutters and remove the black insulation from the end of these two wires. So we'll pop this one into that hole there. Now, how much length do you think we should save at the end of the wire? About that much or a little bit more? A little bit more? Yeah, I think so too. Okay, clippy clippy. And off it comes. I will twiddle that around a bit to stop it fraying excessively. There we are. And of course, exactly the same on its counterpart over here. Into the hole. Give it a squeeze. And there we are. We're doing well and making good progress, which is always encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> we now need to figure out which of these wires is positive and which is negative. And to do that, we'll plug one end of the cable into the car's power socket, like so, and the other end will temporarily secure to the steering wheel with this high-tech masking tape. There we are, and we can now take some readings with the multimeter. So that's giving us a negative number, minus 11.7 volts or thereabouts. So if we swap these probes around now, so they're on the opposite wires, that should give us a positive number, which indeed it does, plus 11.7-ish volts. So this wire here on the right is a positive. And now it's time for some despicable vandalism. Specifically, we're going to take these brand new multimeter leads and chop off the ends. All right. Oh, this feels so wrong. Oh, well, there we go. Snippy, snippy. This one too. It can't escape. There we go. Now. Off camera, I went back to the wire cutters, then removed the insulation from the end of the multimeter leads. These leads now need to be connected to the power cable from the pump, 
And we know, thanks to our previous investigation, that this wire is the positive from that power cable. So this one needs to be connected to the red multimeter lead. These days, of course, there are lots of ways to connect wires easily, quickly and conveniently, but we've run out of all those bits and bobs, so we're going old school and using a soldering iron. So the wires are now wrapped around each other and we're heating them up. And now when they're hot enough, solder, as it is now, will start to flow through those wires and connect them together. And you would not believe how awkward this is with a camera in the way. <laughs> I've barely got room for the soldering iron. I'm wearing a magnifying lenses and I can only just about see what's going on. But nonetheless, we'll get there. There we are, two finished solders, and now, as if by magic, the solders are insulated with electrical tape, and the wire is finished. Let's now take the horn off the car and test that. So there's the horn sitting on the front passenger seat. We'll now give it power and see what happens. Here we go. So, for the theoretical example from the beginning of this video, i.e. that the car's horn doesn't work, the wire we've made confirms that the problem isn't caused by the horn itself because it's beeping down there on the front passenger seat. Hang on, I've got an idea. This is going to be interesting. I just need a moment to set it up. So. This is the electric motor and the piston from the tyre pump we took apart earlier and we can still make them work by applying power via the new cable. All right, so I'll apply power. You keep an eye on this fan, that's going to spin. Keep an eye on that gear down there as well. Are you ready? Here we go. Neat, eh? Anyway, before you go, don't forget to subscribe to Car Spy TV. That makes it easier to find my other content. Can you also please do me a favour and click like on this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.